I think I'm on. Am I on? <clears throat> Thank you, Brian. Good morning. Um, welcome. Glad everybody could make it. Just for your information, why is uh, Dean speaking today? You don't often have this opportunity. Uh, but Pastor Jeff is not feeling well. He was very sick uh, Friday. And yesterday he informed me that he was a little bit better. But in case it might be something contagious, it was just uh, respectful and better that he not, not come spread any germs or bugs that might uh, somebody else might uh, pick up. Now, I'm not going to... You, you don't have a bulletin, and that's okay. We're going to be just fine without a bulletin. Yeah. Uh, different people do the bulletins at different times, and it, it just didn't happen. It's okay. Uh, we'll tell you what you need to know throughout the service. So, are there any uh, announcement type sharings that anyone would like to? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Straup is going to talk about today's offering. It's a Deacon Sunday for offering the story for the DR missions. And a reminder there is new offering envelope boxes back there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Straup. Mr. Straup is a deacon, and the deacons are in, uh, involved with the offerings and financial. Yes, sir. I've got a joy. You know, that, uh, we don't often share joy, but we should. And I, I've updated you in the last couple of years amazingly about my friend and friend. I've been in the process of adopting a child of 80. And last Saturday, praise God. So the other thing is Cody Cody is like eight years old, I believe. And Burns is just a couple years older than me. And so you know there's gonna be a big adjustment to that. So continue to keep them in your prayer. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing, Ted. And we all know what a challenge and difficult time it may be when you want to adopt a child from another country and from a different culture and the governments and the the rules and the regulations involving that, and then oftentimes it takes years for that to happen. So, a uh, blessing, absolutely. Is there anything else? We continue to pray for um, uh, the, the Lear family and the, the loss of uh, their daughter Ashley, and I know there are many others that have lost loved ones. Uh, at time. So we just want to pray for uh, strength and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit to give peace and comfort and hope to those families and those people who have lost uh, loved ones, as well as uh, those experiencing health issues or uh, maybe in the hospital or nursing homes. And uh, uh, today we're going to pay, pray for Jeff's, uh, Pastor Jeff's health too. So uh, just join with me in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day, and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to come to your house to worship you. And we just ask you to give us the guidance and the direction that we need uh, throughout this service and uh, throughout this time that it will be your will, whatever we uh, say it and sing and think and do uh, for you. We just lift up those who may need a, a healing touch with, from you. We ask you to wrap your healing arms around them to give them uh, peace and strength and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives to uh, help them through whatever difficult situations it may be that they are experiencing. Uh, we just give you this day. We give you ourselves. We give you our lives. We thank you for your love for us. Uh, we love you and what you're doing in our lives and the lives of others. Well, all these things we ask in your name. Amen. Uh, praise team. Uh, since Pastor Jeff is not here today and uh, Mrs. Rink is not here today, this Mrs. Rink is, but the praise team is going to need a little help from the congregation. So you're invited to sing a little bit louder today since the praise team is a little bit limited. So uh, you'd be glad to uh, stand if you would like and help the praise team today.
Our first song is How Great Thou Art. is just as I am.
I worked hard. I worked pretty hard on a children's message, because, and now I. I mean, Derek's here, so I almost have to give one. But I'm just going to ask him to pay attention to my message instead of coming up. Now, if you, Derek, if you would like some candy. You just. You just keep that in the pew with you, and yeah, okay. <laughs> so, I'm hoping the sugar keeps you awake. See, that's that's what I'm hoping. Um, I didn't read the the scripture uh, prior because I'm going to use the scripture in my in my message. Um, last Sunday, Jeff's message involved the three wise men and the. Uh, the, their trip, their journey, uh, and how many, I forget how many hundreds of miles um, that was for the three wise men. And uh, oftentimes we use that uh, three wise men journey to compare to mission trips because their three wise men were on a mission trip. And uh, we're going to talk about mission trips today and missionaries. And so we can relate that to the three wise men that were on that. Uh, mission trip slash journey uh, that took them to see uh, baby Jesus. Um, to bring you up to date a little bit on mission trips that are coming up soon in February. Uh, many of you are aware and some may not be. And there are a number here that have already been to the Dominican Republic a number of times. Uh, but Kate and I will be going to the Dominican Republic February 7th and for a number of weeks I'd been asking uh, Pastor Jeff or you, or he always goes he just even during COVID two years ago uh, when it was a uh, risk and we know uh, Pastor Jeff health oftentimes isn't a hundred percent 
He's been struggling with cancer for a number of years. And I don't know if the word to use is remission or whatever, but it uh, doesn't seem to be a, a big problem. But And uh, this spring, uh, Pastor Jeff had uh, chest pain and went to the hospital and had stents put in. So just sharing a few little health issues with Jeff. But the reason I uh, share that is because whenever I ask Jeff, are you going to the Dominican Republic? It's just an instant. Yeah, I'm going. And, and I just want to share the commitment, the dedication, and the passion that Pastor Jeff has. We have, uh, many of us are, are just as much passionate about serving in other countries through mission works or mission trips, but even uh, a week ago, Friday, Friday Jeff te texted me and says, I'm really sick. I probably shouldn't come to church. And I hadn't bought his ticket yet. I said, are you still going? Oh, yeah. And amazing just the, the the mindset and the passion and and the inter the desire to serve uh even though your health might be compromised a little bit i just wanted to, to share that um so i'd like to now i'd like to share the scripture that i uh chose for uh today in uh matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 uh, Jesus told his disciples therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you and I'm going to pick a few words out of that all the words of that scripture is very important but a, a few I'm going to pick out that relate directly to uh, mission trips, missionaries uh, the word go and uh, oftentimes in mission, uh, missionary settings, uh, it is said that uh, go if you can. If you can't go, send. If you can't send, uh, support. Uh, if you can't support, at least pray and encourage uh, anyone uh, that's going anywhere to do mission work. And uh, I'm going to talk a lot about other countries today, but uh, we all know it, it, above the door in the back of the church, it says you are now entering the mission field. So the mission field is is also Millersburg or Goshen or Middlebury or this community or this county or this state or it's wherever you are, uh, uh, whoever you uh, interact with. Um, Francis Isisis has a quote that he says, preach the gospel at all, at all times and whenever necessary use words. So uh, we're all, even though we don't feel adequate to be a missionary to go to another country, we're all missionaries in a sense. We're all ministers in a sense because we're all showing the people around us how believers and Christians act and behave and conduct themselves. So uh, go is a, a word that I want to talk about uh, today uh, regarding mission trips. And what do we do on those mission trips is teach obedience. Uh, a young couple, I think... I think I want to start right in talking about Josh and Jennifer Heyer. I'm going to talk about different people on different mission trips and in different settings in different countries. Um, but if you are not familiar with Jeff, jo Josh and Jennifer Heyer, uh, most of you here have, but I'm going to briefly tell you their story. They are missionaries and they have served in Peru. Yurimigas is a, a small area in Peru and they've been serving there as miss missionaries for seven years. And in 2000, June of 2022, just a year and a half ago, correct me if I'm wrong, Robin, but uh, they came home for their children to be a part of church camps here in, in Indiana. And at that time it was discovered that their daughter Maggie had leukemia cancer through testing locally and then eventually to Riley Hospital. And the family needed to stay and live in Indianapolis so that Maggie could have the chemo uh, cancer treatments that she needed to um, kill the leukemia. And that just took months. And so the, the higher family uh, are still living here, although a few weeks ago, uh, Maggie has made a remarkable recovery from this leukemia so that they could travel again and go back to Peru and do mission work. And a few months ago, the family went back for about six weeks uh, because Josh 
uh, has started, uh, I'm going to tell you what he does now, is discipleship training in Peru. So he teaches ministry leaders, preachers, pastors, whatever they're called in that, those communities, uh, how to preach, actually. You know, when you, discipleship training is teaching others obedience, and, uh, and then you share that, and then you're, that community, that person provides pastoral leadership for that community, and that's what Josh does, is, is teach that. So they went back a, a while ago, and they spent six weeks there, and I think part of the trip was to also see how Maggie was going to handle traveling, and her health is uh, good enough for that. It, like I said, her uh, recovery has been remarkable. And so uh, the Hire family now has been back in the States. And if you didn't know, they live in the house right beside the church. Uh, Zion is uh, providing housing for them for a place to stay because they lived in Peru for seven years. They didn't really have a house here to come back to. And they'd been in Indianapolis for quite some time. Um, so they're living in the house beside the church here. And the plans are... Uh, the family will go back to Peru sometime in February, maybe near the end of February, uh, and their intention is a year or so to serve in, in Peru uh, for Josh to um, continue teaching and training and in the discipleship training that he has been doing there. And eventually, um, the mission organization that Oversees what Josh and Jennifer are doing uh, may possibly place them somewhere else once there is uh, enough I don't know success in the communities that Josh has been preaching in to get enough church leaders to lead the, all the different small communities in that area so if I'm saying that right uh, you know, a missionary, once they have a whole community come to start worshiping, then that missionary, Josh in this case, may possibly go to another area or community or another country. We're not sure yet. But that's future, future. But I'm just sharing that. that and, and Josh's uh, desire and passion to serve as a missionary. Um, do you have... Uh, I'm going to show Josh, so you have a, a picture of, of Josh and Jennifer, and um, I'm going to ask if we can show that video at this time, I think, of, and this, this is a short video, it's like a minute, and um, this is Josh in Yermigas, Peru, and he, he's just sharing a little bit about he and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look and see. I'm not sure if it's Lucy or Maggie in the video, I'll ask. But Brian, if you have that. That's Josh on the left. God has called us to serve the shouting people. Our desire is to see their leaders training in God's word and see them leading and growing in their churches. We work to advocate for our shouting brothers and sisters by providing them access to God's transformational gospel message. Maybe wondering what that means and what we do. Basically, we work in three areas advocacy, evangelism, and discipleship. Advocacy means we work with the shouting people to get what they need. Many times they are discriminated against. They often are not prepared to get medical care, and we can help them access the care they need. Another area we work in is clean water. With the help of churches in the United States, we provide a water filter to each home in the villages that request them. Drinking unfiltered water can cause many health problems. Advocating for the shabby shows them that we care about their struggles and opens the door for us to share Jesus' love with them. Evangelism means telling people about Jesus' love. The shabby people can evangelize their own people most effectively because they speak the shabby language, know the culture, and are more readily accepted into unreached areas. We help shabby pastors with the cost of travel. We also help provide access to the Bible and worship music in Shelley. Our main focus is discipleship, which means modeling for people what it looks like to live like Jesus. We equip trained pastors to teach basic discipleship in the villages. We also oversee the Shelley Discipleship Center, where leaders come for intensive discipleship. In 
In addition, we host youth camps, pastors retreats, and other events and trainings at the center. Our desire is to see the Discipleship Center be self-sustainable. That means we would like it to generate enough income to pay for itself. To that end, we raise chocolate, fish, and chickens to sell. We also raise meat, sheep, and grow plantains in Yucca to help feed people during trainings. When we're not busy with the Shouty Ministry, we are aunt and uncle to the children at the home where we live. We take the kids on outings and celebrate special occasions with them. Our foster son, Rain, is Shouty, and his mother died when he was born. He will probably live with us for a while yet until his dad can care for him. We will love him forever. Thanks for learning about who we are, where we live, and what we do this week. We've enjoyed sharing with you. Thank you. That was actually Jennifer. Uh, I thought it was going to be Josh. And we'll show Josh in a minute. But uh, that was Jennifer speaking. And it, she just told what they do better than I could describe. So uh, now you have a, a picture of Peru and the people that they, they are serving there. And if it wasn't a 24-hour flight from door to door, I would really like to go help Josh and Jennifer because they grow chocolate trees. <laughs> well, that just gets my attention, doesn't it, jo Johnny? <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, do you have Josh yet? Um, yes. This is Josh. I wanted to be able to share Jennifer talking and Josh talking. So Jennifer got to speak in the first video. So this is Josh. Okay, thank you. Um, the video, you, you can tell, is made for Maple City, but it, for anybody like us to watch it as well. And you saw on both videos where the family took on uh, taking care of a baby that was born, that his mother uh, died as he was born, or I'm not sure the details, but his mother died and his father couldn't take care of him because his father has other family. Uh, other kids and has to work and anyhow uh, somebody needed to take care of this baby and so the hires take care of the baby uh, as well as doing the, all the mission work that they do there and I'm uh, a few years ago I showed a, a picture of a house that they had moved to and it was really small and Jennifer uh, pointed to the corner of the room and she said well this is a kitchen and uh, another part of the room and that's our bedrooms and uh, then there was a curtain and it was just really small and the conditions that they live in but they were grateful and thankful for having a roof and the, the roof had eaves trough to catch rainwater for them to use for cooking because oftentimes the, the rivers or the ponds are contaminated water and they talked about uh, doing things to establish fresh water so they do a lot of, of that work as well I'd like to read you a scripture that Josh uh, lives by and has mentioned often uh, when I've talked to him or anybody talks to him 
uh, he considers it an opportunity to be able to serve God wherever God takes him and places him. And the scripture is the book of James chapter 1, uh, verse 1 through 8. And it, the scripture says, Consider it uh, pure joy, my brothers, whether you, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and that perseverance can help you finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking in anything. And oftentimes, Rita will put inspirational quotes on Facebook. And uh, a, a recent uh, inspirational quote that Rita put on Facebook said the same thing that all, all of us can uh, read and see and relate to. It's, uh, she said, uh, the challenge has come before us so that we can discover the magnitude of our inner strength and without these challenges we may never grow stronger so if life's always easy you don't have the reason to really uh, ask God for help and, and growing stronger and uh, now I'm gonna uh, uh, Bruce isn't here fight ministries in the Dominican Republic I um, I've talked about Josh and Jennifer and what they do in Peru and I just want to touch on a little bit some other uh, missions that Zion supports and uh, more people in this congregation and this uh, community have went to the Dominican Republic and worked in these uh, two organizations that I'm going to mention. Uh, it's, not, it's not that easy and, and not everybody can just jump in a plane and go to Peru. I know Robin has sometimes but it, it gets a little more difficult and, and stressful to make that long of a trip unless you're going to stay there for a long time. So uh, I would encourage uh, anybody to do so if they can. But Dominican Republic is easy. It's only uh, from Millersburg to Santiago, maybe 10 hours. Uh, but um, at any rate, I'm going to talk about fight ministries which was started maybe about seven years ago and many churches in this area supported the purchase of the property and the building of the buildings and fight ministries fight stands for freeing individuals from the grasp of human trafficking and there were uh, three people that started it uh, the building and construction of uh, the fight uh, operation and it's designed uh, to uh, for victims of human trafficking, uh, a place for them to go when they're rescued from the situation that they may be in. And this is ugly, and uh, some of us uh, are not aware of the details of how this actually happens, but the bad guys are going to a poor community in another country. Dominican is third or fourth in the world for human trafficking, and they'll convince uh, mom that uh, they'll give their daughter a job doing housekeeping or work in the kitchen at a resort. And mom says, well, eh, so that's a great opportunity. And the daughter will make money and send back to mom. And they got all these tricks and stories. And, and then when the bad guys take the daughter to the, well, she never ends up in the resort. She ends up in human trafficking. And so, uh, and the country's government oftentimes is not as cooperative as they could be in rescuing victims, but there's an organization called International Justice that's worldwide that have people in countries like this to try to rescue victims of human trafficking or in any other situation. And then they, once they're rescued, they need a place to go. So Fight Ministries is that place and organization for uh, victims to go. Did I? Help me, Brian. I had something about fight, uh, a video, and um, uh, this, yeah, the lady's not on there, but if you've been there before, you're aware uh, and familiar with a lady called Phyllis, and she's been the uh, property manager, business manager, uh, hiring, uh, and in the past two years, it's actually, uh, being done there are victims of the human trafficking being placed in this uh, location and and they get 24 7 
care, but it's really so they don't run away too. Uh, some situations are uh, high risk or difficult uh, to to handle things we can't imagine uh, when a girl has been in a slave situation for a number of years and then she's rescued and then her because uh, oftentimes drugs are used and uh, her mind isn't functioning properly so uh, therapists counselors uh, psychologists uh, are all hired and put on staff at this uh, fight place to get these girls back to civilization. This is fight. Uh, Brian's going to play this a little bit. It's the location. There's buildings in the background through the trees. Uh, so I'm going to let, uh, let this play a little bit and so you can learn a little bit more about uh, fight. This gives you a visual of the fight property and uh, tells you a little bit more about it, maybe a little better than I could, but and, and the, the frames that you read tells about the fight uh, and what they're all about. Um, and all the, the property was just purchased uh, and all those buildings were just built in the last seven years by mission groups and teams that came and mostly from this area. Uh, over the years, uh, the mission group was called the Goshen Group that did a lot of work at uh, the boarding school in Harbacoa. And I just talked to a gentleman uh, today that I didn't realize had been to Harbacoa and a number of years ago uh, with another mission team or group. And I know there's been many uh, people in this congregation who have been to the Harbacoa area to do work. And through Working at the boarding school all those years, a connection was made with people who wanted to create and develop and build this fight uh, property in the buildings and the organization for the, for the human trafficking. So the, the goal and the objective and the desire to build what we just saw was, was, is really recent. It hasn't been there for very long. And I'd just like to emphasize, um, thank you. Maple City supports a lot of these missions very well and Goshen community people and businesses. I know at times uh, fight needed a lot of materials and resources and businesses and people in the Goshen area put together a shipping container and put it on a ship to send to the Dominican public and the, the gentleman at fight got this shipping container and it takes months to get it out of the port at the Dominican Republic because once the government gets there, oh, oh, there's a shipping container from the United States. Oh, we can get a lot of money for that. And it's always a nightmare. And it, it's just challenging and difficult. And uh, back to Josh's uh, scripture, uh, so often in any mission work, it's challenging and difficult. And we Americans 
uh, are so accustomed to responses right now. And in uh, other countries and other cultures, it may take months or may take a year um, to accomplish the desire that you hope to, that could happen so much quicker and sooner. Um, so this is fight. I'm just going to share a few more um, sayings that I like to share. Some of these have come from uh, Rita. And if you don't know Rita, get to know her. She's usually in the back row, and she's usually the, when you hear the bells at 15 till 9, that's Rita ringing the bell. So she has her ministry responsibilities that she takes very seriously. And uh, thank you, uh, Rita. But she's on Facebook, and these are, uh, quotes and sayings that are just inspirational uh, that I enjoy and that anybody would. Um, you may be only one person in the world, but you may be the world to one person. Uh, wherever life plants you, bloom with grace. It's not so much the harvest, but it's the seeds that you plant. And it's not what you gather, it's what you gather. Or it's not what you gather, it's what you scatter. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Always uh, try to be the lighthouse in someone else's storm. Prepare for tomorrow uh, and make it the best that you can. Every day in every way, it's God's way. The more we recognize our weaknesses, the easier it is to recognize God's strength for us. Always look towards the sun, S-O-N, you so you won't see your shadow if he brings you to it he'll get you through it are there any questions or comments from anyone else that has been to the Dom Dominican Republic or anywhere else that will have anything you'd be interested in sharing um, about your your mission experience I just wanted to offer that. Uh, so if anybody wanted to, to share anything, you could. Um, uh, this concludes my... Oh, no, I, it doesn't conclude. I have a lot more. <laughs> I told you Bruce Yoder was going to the Dominican Republic and Bruce Yoder is going to fight. Now, I don't have a video about Dulos and it's a private Christian school in uh, Harbacoa and the groups that we and others in the community and other churches uh, used to go to Caribbean Mountain Academy which was a boarding school now uh, we're serving a, a private Christian school called Dulos in Harbacoa and it's been established for many years and it's a Christian based uh, school where they teach the Bible and um, it's a K-12 uh, arrangement and uh, we've been familiar with this school for many years, and last year we started doing work for this school. And just last year, this process started where the school is in town and it's confined and it can't grow. And uh, the parents in Harbaco want their uh, children to go to Dulos because it's such a great uh, Christian-based private school. And so the school is financially supported by uh, if the students, parents uh, can, uh, there's tuition charged for that student. If there's other students that come from a poor part of the town and they can't, uh, their tuition is subsidized or scholarship in some way so that the school is not all uh, rich kids. I shouldn't say it that way, but so the school is a mix between uh, those that have and those who do not and then it's just a, a good cultural mix for the students that are, that are in the school. But the school cannot grow because it's confined in town. So the school went out of town and bought like 15 acres of property that now they'd like to develop and build a new school. So their goal and their desire for the future is to someday have a large school campus uh, out in the country uh, to enable them to have a lot more students. And so that's where Zion comes in. Uh, people who can go help uh, work to support uh, this school to uh, develop the property, to build the campus that they need to, 
and eventually in the future and all this uh, since it's a Christian based uh, worship based Bible teaching based school it, it's serving other serving God by serving others uh, I just wanted to mention that I didn't know if I touched on that yet so uh, that's still in the same area as fight but it's like a half hour drive from the fight organization to the Dulo school in Harbico. We're going to focus on communion at this time. Reading from Matthew chapter 26, uh, verse 26. Uh, While they were eating and drinking, this is the Last Supper uh, that Jesus had with the disciples. Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he offered it to them and he said, drink from it, all of you, this is my blood. And this is the new covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. So my elders would uh, come forward at, at this time. That first scripture I read was from Matthew. I'd like to read another one that's very similar uh, from uh, 1 Corinthians that Paul uh, wrote to the the church of Corinth um, for communion. Paul tells the Corinthians, uh, Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took the bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he told the disciples that this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me and in the same way he took the cup and he said this is the new covenant this is my blood do this whenever you drink it and I'd like to make a little connection here with Apostle Paul and missions and missionaries that Paul was a missionary and if Paul had not been in jail a good part of his life he wouldn't have had the opportunity to write these letters to all these churches in Corinth and Ephesus and to the Romans and to all the the most of the New Testament is letters from Paul and Paul was a missionary even though he was in jail most of the time that he wrote these letters so I just wanted us to to see and understand the relationship between Paul's writings in the New Testament and mission work Please hold the elements until all are served.
In the upper room that night, uh, Jesus took the bread and he told his disciples, this is my body broken for you. And I'm sure the disciples did not understand. And it wasn't until later they realized the importance of what Jesus was referring to, that the bread was his body that was broken and that we need to take that into our body uh, because uh, we are the body of the church and Christ wanted to emphasize to us that to... uh, in order to have our sins forgiven, we confess and, and we partake in this communion. So, in remembrance of him, at this time, take and eat. Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks and he told his disciples, when you drink of this, this is my blood that was shed for you. In remembrance of him, take and drink. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for giving us the symbolic bread and cup that we may realize your sacrifice and that as long as we confess and repent we will have salvation we acknowledge your love for us we recognize that you came to serve us and to save us amen The praise team would come up. Uh, This last song that the praise team is going to sing with us, us with them, is called Nothing But the Blood. And it's appropriate to sing this song as we take uh, communion. The song comes from uh, 1 John uh, chapter 1. But we walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. Mission work. And the blood of Christ, his son, purifies us from all sin. So if you, if you would like to stand and sing nothing but the blood... Nothing 
Thank you for your support of all missions, of all missionaries, whether they're in Millersburg or another country or wherever they may be. Uh, your encouragement and support in any way that you can for anyone else that's in ministry or serving in whatever capacity that they are serving. Uh, thank you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day and we thank you for giving a, us the time to see uh, people that are serving you and doing your work. And we just ask you to continue to guide us and direct us and give us the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may serve you uh, wherever we're at, whoever we meet, and continue to, to work in ministry and sharing your love with others. We ask these things in your name. Amen.